Uh, for those that want to do a ticketed live stream, do you have some advice for them just in terms of maybe marketing or the production of it? Uh, because obviously through the pandemic, live streaming has 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 boomed. Um, and, and there's a bunch of people just going live for free. So to charge for a live stream, where do you feel like artists need to be? How do they need to promote it? What should the quality be from, from your experience uh, from people using um, uh, the live streaming option? Yeah, it's interesting because when I get asked that question, it kind of comes down to whatever the goals of the campaign are, right? So mm -hmm. video is you most of the time it's being used as not necessarily the, re the revenue itself. It's used to drive revenue elsewhere, like buying merchandise, buying an album, buying something else, right? So uh, if you get to a particular level, so let's, we can start at the top and kind of move down. Once you're at the top, top, doesn't matter what it looks like. You know, honestly, because if you're just doing like a, a really lo-fi Q&A and you're sitting on a couch and you're just answering chat, then at that point, it's just all about access to the artist, right? So mm -hmm. that you don't need to have this necessarily massive over-the-top production. Or there's the other side of it. You have the budget to do some almost feature film movie production size uh, uh, production. So by doing that, then yeah, of course, then you can ticket that because you can justify it by saying we did a lot of production. So it's either access to the artist or it has to be visually appealing and something that they would find against a streaming service almost, almost like Netflix, because if you are trying to justify payment, um, mostly the way that I look at things like Instagram and YouTube, uh, they're marketing platforms. You use them in order to be able to drive people to somewhere else that you can monetize them. I mean, I mean, there, there's a reason why you have Patreon exists and it is that valued at the way that it is. And there's a reason why a lot of these companies, both between creators and musicians, drive people from YouTube to either go listen to their album on Spotify or buy merch, that kind of thing. So that's kind of the way that I see social. It's they're primarily for growing an audience and then how are you going to monetize them afterwards from the independent artist perspective in terms of creating a compelling live stream that somebody would be willing to pay for the way that I kind of look about that is give them a tie the digital and physical together, right? So using something, how do I support you by buying like a t-shirt and then that t-shirt will grant me access to watch something. So then the fan doesn't feel like they're necessarily paying 10 bucks to watch a live stream, they feel like they're buying 20 bucks of an artist that they want to support. And then they're getting access to something for free, even though you baked in the cost of the, the live stream into the, that t-shirt. So it, it just kind of depends the a on the goal of what the person wants to achieve. Like what, what is the purpose of the campaign? What is the overarching goal here? And if it's just viewership, stay on social media. Usually, I mean, that, that kind of seems to be, if you're looking for just eyeballs, that's definitely that. But if you're looking for something that's a little bit more intimate, the community around you is going to be smaller because it's the people willing to pay to be in there, then that's where ticketed live streams make the most sense.